what is the thing that, or, or, or the series of, of events that just made the source go downward to the point that you left? All right, I'll start with the vibe. I mean, people, a lot of people don't know the, the, the backstory to, to vibe. So it's maybe 91, 92, Russell Simmons calls me up and he's like, Dave, you know, uh, Quincy Jones, I want to introduce you to him. He wants to start a rap magazine, but I'm telling him, you know, he needs to just invest in the source. You guys are the shit, blah, 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 blah. And so he, he sets up an introduction. I didn't meet Quincy initially, but some of the people working with Quincy uh, from his company, and they were already beginning to work with Time Warner and Time Warner's magazine division, which was huge. And so we start having meetings and discussions and they're like, man, we love the source. We love you guys. We, you know, we want to invest. We're going back and forth for like a year, you know, ends up, they fly, they fly us out to LA and uh, we're whisked up into the, into the hills, into, you know, Beverly Hills where, where Quincy's mansion is. And we're going to finally, you know, meet with him for, you know, what we're thinking is the big, the big deal. We're going to be able to close the big deal finally. So, uh, so he has us waiting around, waiting around. Finally, Quincy shows up, walks in the room. And basically he says, you know, listen, guys, uh, I've decided I want to start my own magazine. It's going to be called Volume. Um, but, you know, I want to make an offer to buy you guys out and give you jobs to come work for me at the new magazine <laughs> and uh the offer suffice to say was 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 pretty low um so i got the fuck up out of there pretty quick and realized i had been wasting my time some of the other guys sure. were entertaining the offer but uh after that they had to change the name from from uh volume because they found out that there was a trademark problem over in London. Somebody had a Vibe magazine, and that's when they ended up switching it to Vibe. So then Vibe came out a year or so later after that. Do you do you feel like? Well, well I know first and foremost when you could listen, you could have told me that you were going to get have your own magazine. I could have been in my own house. I could have got the phone call for that shit. I I didn't have to come out here for that. So now, of course, I know that he saw what kind of jeans you had on because he saw the back of your ass. But in your mind, throughout the whole process of that year, did you feel like, did anything say to you, maybe they're kind of lining me up? Maybe they're trying to see the inside of what the source is? And oh, for sure. I mean, that's what they did do. I know that's what they were doing. They were just, you know, trying to milk me to get all the information, learn from what we were doing, everything we were doing, and bring that over to their shit. And, you know, but after that happened, again, I wasn't, you know, yeah, I was a little annoyed, like that's some sucker shit, you know, what you're doing or whatever. But I'm like, see, the thing is, I knew in listening to Quincy, he didn't understand hip hop. Like, you know, no disrespect. Quincy's done amazing things for black music, um, so many contributions. But Quincy did, did, did not un understand hip hop and really didn't respect hip hop in its authentic form. Quincy... You know, and if you go back and you look at Vibe in the beginning, like his idea was, you know, to put, you know, Snoop Dogg on the cover one month and then come back with, you know, uh, Whitney Houston. And this is before, you know, Whitney w was was cool or whatever. She was pop or, or, you know, Janet Jackson or just things that, you know, Chardet, you know, like, you know, these things didn't mesh. Hip hop was hip hop. We had the R and B mm -hmm. hip hop, the Marys and the Jodeces that we fuck with, and separately, you know, shit. I grew up listening to Anita Baker and you know, uh, fucking Frankie Beverly and shit. Of course, we all loved that music, but it didn't mesh in with the hip hop culture, you know, directly. It was borrowed from, and we sampled it and shit like that. But you couldn't really merge those things the way he thought that he could do. So I was like, look, I'm not worried because we're going to have the streets behind us. We got the credibility. This shit's going to be kind of watered down. 
And what ended up happening is they actually helped the source because they put, you know, millions of dollars behind Vibe. They went out and got a lot of big companies to advertise that weren't, you know, interested in hip hop or the source before. And that, you know, that carried over to, to us. So, um, you know, we had a rivalry with Vibe over the years, but but we basically, and, and you know, I talked to Keith Klingscales, who was the publisher for a while uh, in those years, recently in the last few years, and he admitted it. We we were kicking their ass up and down, you know, the field on every front. We outsold Vibe, you know, our compilation albums were huge. They, they copied the source hip hop hits and did the Vibe hits and their shit, you know, sold whatever, five copies or something. I mean, the Vibe Awards was a knockoff from the Source Awards I had been doing, and that never, you know, reached a level of the Source Awards. You know, it is what it is. I mean, no no disrespect. There were some great, talented people that were part of Vibe. You know, shout out to Keith and my man, Len Burnett, and uh, some of the editorial people that, that worked there were very, very talented. But uh, when it came to hip hop and, you know, the streets, uh, the source was, you know, was was the, the the thing, and they could never, you know, they could never match that that DNA, you know. Batman scoop.